Good afternoon, everyone. Steve McClafferty, Finance Director here at the Vermont Veterans Home. Here is uh, Mr. Lenny Barclay, I want to introduce to you. Um, witness to history, and we'll get uh, to his uh, historical moment. We do have a lot of vets here. Um, we've had one um, that uh, designed the propulsion system for the uh, Ford class of aircraft carriers, the new ones. We've had a ranger who was here who um, was now given the bestowed upon uh, Army uh, Soldier of the Year at one time from, for being in Vietnam. So welcome, Mr. Barclay. Thank you. And we're gonna, <coughs> Thank you. We're going to go over a lot. A lot can be um, derived just from this little single piece of paper, DD-214. So, so, Mr. Barclay, I see you were born um, a couple of years ago, not many, yeah, in Bergenfield. Yeah, 1924. No? Yeah. Uh, so what was it like growing up in Bergenfield, New Jersey, you it know, was, pre, it was, <laughs> pre um, uh, depression and then during the 30s? Right. It was, it was very interesting and I look back on it and, and, and see the vast change that has made in society since then. Uh, <clears throat> it was, uh, it was, it, it was an interesting, terribly interesting, it wasn't just mundane, say, oh, well, I grew up in there, and uh, there's a million stories to tell about mm -hmm. my, my growing up, and, and uh, uh, fortunately, very fortunately, my father had a good job, and he worked all the way through the, the mm. Depression, and uh, he worked at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel oh. in, in New York yeah. City. Oh, wow, and very he, nice. And uh, he, he wound up being manager of the room service, so, which was a, a very, very good, uh, good job, and uh, we lived, we lived in Burton County, New Jersey, mm -hmm. about five miles from the Hudson River, mm -hmm. and so it wasn't uh, difficult to get into New York City. We had a yeah. train going through town, uh -huh. take a train to Weehawken, take mm -hmm. the, the 42nd Street ferry across, <laughs> and walk up 42nd <laughs> Street to, to a Park yeah, Avenue yeah. where the hotel was, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I did it quite quite often, especially when I was a teenager. My buddies yeah. and I, we would do that mm. and go over Forty Second Street. Was full of cowboy story movies, movie houses, and ah, cowboy okay. stories. So we enjoyed that much. So uh, I knew uh, I knew New York City fairly well. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. I, I, growing up there, uh, <coughs> the uh, it was not not easy, but all I I thank God. Uh, every day for for what my life has been because uh, as I say my father was always working mm -hmm. and we lived in this small town five miles from the Hudson River and half the town was empty lots huh. and uh, so there were lots of lots of trees and lots of bushes around I, I loved being out into the uh, fields and the woods we had a big woods behind the house Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my father doing well at work. We had a big house and uh, nine kids. Well, of course, when I was about five years, five or six years old, my two eldest sisters married mm -hmm. and moved a few blocks away. <laughs> so we had seven kids in the house. And uh, my, uh, my elder brothers, my two elder brothers, they, they fixed up the attic, which mm -hmm. was a which is a high ceiling yeah. room, and uh, the four boys, we had four boys, mm -hmm. we slept up there in the attic, and uh, yes. I remember my, my bedroom, my bed was next to a window, and I could look out, lay on my pillow and look out and see the Empire State Building. It was quite mm -hmm. an interesting yes. situation there. <laughs> Of course, they, they were building it at the time. I think they yes. finished it in 1934. Yeah, you know? I was just going to mention that. So uh, it was a uh, it was a great life for me. I, mm -hmm. I loved the uh, I loved being there because mm -hmm. it was uh, it wasn't crowded at all. Mm -hmm. was lots and lots of empty empty mm -hmm. uh, lots Space. around that place. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, probably a quarter of those houses, the other houses, were empty. Because of the depression, and uh, you could walk walk down the street and say, "Oh, then Mr. Kruger, he committed suicide because he lost his job and couldn't feed the family." Mm -hmm. and, and there's a, there's another one. He ran away. We haven't seen him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know uh, 
we had a my mother bought milk every every other day she had four quarts of milk <laughs> delivered mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we occasionally she occasionally went and said did somebody take a bottle of milk no <laughs> and we found out that was one of the poor oh, neighbors goodness. that we my oldest brother he stayed up early mm -hmm. in the morning and he saw this fellow come down the, down the street, come up and steal a bottle of milk for mm -hmm. his kids. Mm -hmm. And so my mother, my mother, she ordered another, another <laughs> bottle. Yeah, so, uh, that, so that's she, what you did. She had an extra bottle just for him. Mm -hmm. So uh, things were tough in those days. Yes. And, uh, but uh, gradually, gradually got better and better. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, I, I was a teenager coming up through the 30s. So mm -hmm. I, I wasn't mature enough to see the big change that was being made uh, until I got in the war what? started when the war started everybody was going to join up no. yeah what was so, uh, what was school like back then school because I always hear from my dad having to trudge up you know two miles up the hill both ways with the, <laughs> with the cord of wood on his back so no I, I, we, we didn't have that but we were fortunate we had to walk a mile to school mm -hmm. even in the kindergarten you know as mm -hmm. in, the, in the yeah five years old and uh, but in the second grade they bought a they built a new school nearby nearby our oh. house okay so it was only about a quarter of a mile away so uh, it was great brand new mm -hmm. school uh, new teachers and everything and uh, so we had a it it was a great experience uh, in this especially in the schools yeah and, uh, and then when we got into junior high school we went down to the main school in the mm -hmm. cent center of town which was a mile away okay. and uh, that, uh, that was on the other side of the railroad track we had a railroad tracks from the <laughs> middle of the house the middle mm -hmm. of the, the uh, the town and it uh, it segregated the people you know mm -hmm. the different we, we looked at each other as yeah. different yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other side of the track yeah mm -hmm. fortunately we had state representative living on our side so we <laughs> felt high class yes. and oh, that yeah. was the other yeah. side of over there yeah. so uh, it was uh, it, uh, unfortunately mm -hmm. this the, the high school was on the other side of the tracks Mm -hmm. So uh, they claimed they they were they were the smartest. They may have been the poorest, but they were they the smartest. smartest. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned there was nine of you. What? There was nine kids. Nine kids yeah. totally. And yeah. where did you? Uh, were I, you I was I was uh, number eight. Oh, okay. You're I'm next young, to the, the youngest sister. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now they're all gone now. She yeah. she died in the uh, early nineties, and uh, 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 all my all my siblings died in the nineties. You know. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. it is. condolences. It, it, I, we don't. We always debate whether it was from my father or my mother who brought, who brought the good genes in. Uh, uh, you, you'll yeah. take them either way. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Do you remember anything about uh, your grandparents, your parents' no, parents? No, okay. never, never saw them. Okay. Never saw them. My father was German. Okay. And my mother was English, and okay. uh, never saw the grandparents. Okay. I saw a lot of uh, uncles and aunts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even from Germany, mm -hmm. uh, my father, you know, had them come over and visit, ah. and uh, a lot of a lot of the English came over and visited. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but uh, unfortunately, uh, no you grandparents, know, and yeah. we had lots of pictures of them around. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, that's uh, that's yeah. always good. I'm yeah. big on genealogy. Yes, you know, just right. yeah. I want, I, a, I want to know two things: where I came from, yeah. and B, what I, what am I going to look like when I get old? Yeah. So. My father was a, he was an unusual man. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought he was very hard to get along with mm -hmm. because he, he was solid German, you know. Okay. I mean, he, he was raised in eastern Germany uh, in a very small town and at the age of 14 he was taken out of school and put into a hotel for, to, to work, to learn a trade. Okay. And way back in those days, in the 1880s, mm -hmm. you know, 1890s, uh, work was not easy to come by, and work was different. No, mm -hmm. no unions, no, yes, no, uh, no standing up and say I object. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. So he yep. uh, he took he he was put into this job uh, in in the hotel, put in the kitchen, 
and for two years he worked there, for no pay, just learning, wow. learning the, 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 the ropes. And uh, he said lots of times he had to do the dishes, you know, wash it. If he broke anything, they wrote mm -hmm. it down. And when he, after two years, he started getting paid, he had to pay Good for job. it. You know, Jeez. so it was tough, tough life. Mm -hmm. Well, he, uh, he, he learned. He got it instilled in his mind that work mm -hmm. was all there is to life. Mm -hmm. And so uh, <laughs> that's what he looked at us kids Good for. Stuff. You know, every time he came home, he said, "What did you do today?" Yeah. <laughs> so, what did you? So, uh, really, really a strict German, ah. but uh, we loved him very much because yeah. he was, he was kind and generous to us, and, mm -hmm. and, and we yeah. knew we knew that he was providing us with a nice home, oh. where our friends were were not getting a yes. good home because their parents weren't working. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a very, very interesting time, and uh, uh, my father was. Uh, <laughs> Was was a, he was a, a real great person? He mm -hmm. was uh, very honest and very generous, mm -hmm. but uh, work, work, yeah, work. Oh, yeah. That's all he yeah. was concerned about. You no. Know? So, with your father being German and your mother being English, how the heck did they meet? Uh, yeah, <laughs> at I, the I, Waldorf Astoria. <laughs> he uh, he worked his way up through different hotels from from Germany to, to Paris. Ah. And he got a job in Paris and okay. learned French. He spoke French fluently. Ah. And then from there, he was invited to a hotel in Manchester, the Midlands Hotel, which was the biggest hotel in England at the time, the mm -hmm. Midlands Hotel. Mm -hmm. And so he got a job there, and he, he learned English. And uh, when later on, when we were, my wife and I were overseas trying to learn different languages, he said, Plenty. Read the newspaper. That's how mm -hmm. I learned English. <laughs> Read the newspaper every day. <laughs> so, uh, wow. So uh, that that's that, that's, yeah. that's, that's very what good. To, with, with him, um, fluent in German, French, yeah. English. Yes. Yes. Jeez. Yeah, fluently. That's, yeah. Uh, so so well, so well. If we, if we have time, I'd like yeah. I could throw this in. Yeah. So well that uh, and. Uh, Some, some. Uh, he spoke big, uh, the. He no, would no, some enter big, some big wealthy American. Oh. I can't think of his name right now. I should have <coughs> written it down. Mm -hmm. Anyway, some big wealthy American, railroad or, okay. or something. He said he used to come and stay at the Midlands Hotel, mm -hmm. and, and my father was getting into the position where he was serving him all the time. Mm -hmm. Got to like him very much. The mm -hmm. war broke out, World War One. Yeah, and he. Uh, he was put on a on a small island out in the Irish Sea, oh. the Isle of Man. It was okay, a, yep, I've it heard. was a, a, a prisoner of war camp, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so <laughs> he was there for a while, and uh, my mother got the idea that she didn't like that. Of course, <laughs> you know, she said perhaps perhaps we can move to to America and they can let you out. Mm -hmm. So she made all the arrangements, and she went, she went and found this guy, this American, you know, and yeah. told him. He said, "Oh my goodness, so we can't have that." Yeah. So he made arrangements. He made the arrangements for my father to get out of the prison and over to Eng over to America, America. and gave Jeez. him a job in the hotel, the, the wow. Vanderbilt Hotel. Oh, okay, yep, Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. That was them, and oh, yes. uh, that was the biggest hotel in, in New York at the time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he got a job in the Vanderbilt Hotel, and then two years later, yeah, two years later, later, my mother came over in the middle oh. of the war, 15, uh, 1950, 1960, they came over. Wow. My mother came over with four kids by herself on the transport and with all the all the German Jeez. submarines out there. Yep, going through the North uh, Atlantic. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, he got this job over here, hmm. and uh, he liked. He was doing very, very well, mm -hmm. and they lived in the Bronx, okay, in New York for a yep. while, and then they they wanted to move out in the country, so they moved across the river into New Jersey. Yeah, so, yeah. sounds some something similar to my great grandparents uh, immigrating from Greece in 1910. Oh yeah, and they uh, lived in Brooklyn. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what they, you know, yeah. that's what they did, and you know, um, had a restaurant down there. 
So what guts? To, to yeah, I know. What, they only had. Um, out. Yeah. I think they had like seventy dollars to their name when they got off the boat. Yes. So yes. that's. I yeah. mean, a phenomenal amount of money, but yes. yeah. Back then, but geez, you know, I mean, what guts it took to come from one country to another, yes. you know, set up shop. And I can't imagine your your mom with four kids, ah, yeah, in, yes. you know, in tow. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and, uh, people had your your uh, was it yeah. your, your your grandfather? My great grandparents. Your great grandparents. Yeah. Well, what guts? Yeah. Oh, I know. So, oh. so we got through. Um, how you got here, your your parents, and I'm going to presume mom was a um, a, a lovely homemaker. She was. She said, fortunately, mm -hmm. I should have mentioned this before. She yeah. was a nurse. Oh, geez. Uh, yeah, a, a, a registered nurse in England. Okay. And uh, it was a great help for us kids when when we got over, mm -hmm. came along, and uh, how how they met. You you mentioned yes. how, how, how they, they met. met. And he uh, he worked at the hotel, and he lived in an area had to go past my mother's house mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And my mother saw him once and said, oh, why? And every day she was out sweeping <laughs> and passing words back and forth, you know. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. these women. Oh. <laughs> so so, so, so uh, they got to talk and then uh, mm -hmm. to know each other. And uh, he, my mother said, he never went out with a girl before because mm -hmm. he was so dedicated to his job. He yeah. would never, never take time, time. off. Mm -hmm. And so he would stop a few minutes and talk and oh, because he was, was going so home and finished for the day. Mm -hmm. And they got to know each other. Yes. You know? okay. so. Yeah, my parents met at a USO dance at uh -huh. uh, Stewart Air Force Base in the late 40s. Oh, yeah. Down in Newburgh, New York. Ah. So oh, yes. That's, that's how my parents met. Yeah, yeah. So. I can imagine every day your mother. Oh, geez, it's you know, you know, five thirty. Yes, is he, right. Got to be coming there. by. Let me throw some dirt outside so I can go outside and sweep it up and, <laughs> and say did. hi. Yeah, <laughs> probably did. Yeah. yeah, like you said, you know those women. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but in those uh -oh. days, this was a, this was a, you know, an eight eight eighteen eighties eighteen nineties. I know. And yeah. uh, my mother used to tell me about her living conditions and 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 what what really intrigued me was that. They, they they cooked in the fireplace, mm -hmm. and then yeah. and, and and one day and her father came along. He said, "I'm I'm getting a stove, this great big cast it's iron dying. stove that fit into the fireplace. You know, ah. and had a door where they could bake mm -hmm. and everything, mm -hmm. but Boy. everything was right into the fireplace. You know? Jeez. No. Wow. So and high school was good there in um, in uh, Bergenfield. Yeah, I went to yeah. high school in Bergenfield. Okay. Yes. Any yes. particular studies? Did you? Did they teach languages back then in school? Uh, the, 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 I don't know why. Latin. La oh, know? yeah, that's true. Yeah. I forgot about yeah, that. So, Latin, yes. So uh, it, it seemed to be easy to me, uh, Latin, you know, mm -hmm. rather than French. Yeah. <laughs> French was more difficult than Latin, so uh, I took Latin and uh, yeah. just eased by on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it yeah. sounds like. Um, I, 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 I didn't do tremendously well in, in high school, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but I uh, managed to get through. Yes. Know? So you graduated high school probably, you know, like in 40, uh, let's see, 42, 43, 42, 42, 42. Yeah, yeah. and then a few months later, you, uh, I'm going to presume you worked someplace between high school and when you, before you entered into the military, into the Navy. Uh, I went to school for six months. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I was interested in machine shop work. Okay. So oh, geez, to, very good. The government was... Uh, you know, yeah. get, getting all these uh, WPA, the works factories, and working and everything, mm -hmm. and so they had schools you had, could go to. So I went to the machinist made school for six months, you know, okay. which was uh, uh, turned out to be much later very very beneficial for me. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh great! And then the United States Navy called. Yeah. Or right. you called that. Right. You know, uh, <coughs> I, I I feel I feel very guilty uh, about that because. When the war broke out in, in December of 41, mm -hmm. my brother had been drafted about six months later. Okay. And he was waiting for his six months to finish up. He was drafted for one year at that okay. point, in the beginning. One okay. year, and that's all you had to serve. Okay. And he was so disappointed that he, he wasn't getting <laughs> out. So, anyway, mm -hmm. uh, the war came along, mm -hmm. and uh, in the early 1942s, mm -hmm. 
January there, a lot yeah. of the guys were yeah. leaving high school to, yes. to join. The Marines were the big, big deal at the time. Everybody yes. was taught, especially uh, it, even in like the reports from the Philippines with mm -hmm. Marines were. Yeah. Oh, these guys were in. I said, no, I said, no, I said, uh, you can get killed out there. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I, I always felt, I, I always felt guilty. Never talked mm -hmm. about it much mm -hmm. until recently where I admit, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't have the guts to be a Marine. Mm -hmm. uh, hey. And, and uh, so, uh, time came along, I joined the Navy, yeah. you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, you you but, served our country my, during its need. My best friend, my best mm -hmm. friend at, at home, at school and everything, he joined the Marines. Yeah. He said, boy, he said, I'm not afraid to get out there and fight Lenny. Mm -hmm. Evidently you are. I said, no, I'm not afraid to get out. I'll, I'll, I'll do my share of what they want mm -hmm. to do. But uh, he joined the Marines. He spent the whole war yeah. on a little island out in the Pacific. He said he never saw a Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> and my, and my, my younger sister, mm -hmm. she shows him my resume of the war and everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so, I, I would have liked to have traded with you. Yeah, He's yeah, like, he'd yeah, probably yeah. say, geez. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm reading, you know, uh, like I said, uh, machine. Um, you know, training you had, and the first ship you were on is a, a very, and I didn't know about it until you uh, mentioned it, the USS Greer. Yes, right. Um, during the war, I think it, um, let me just look up, was it in, uh, it was in 41, um, in September, um, right here. In September, the, right? The it, 40, had, it, had, yep. it put, put its name in history. You know, yep, you know. the Greer incident uh, got yeah. us into the war. What, uh, right, right, right. I know it was before you enlisted. Right. Roosevelt picked it up. Yeah. You know, that uh, the, jet, the submarines had fired upon our ship. Yep. Mm -hmm. My ship had fired back. He said, from now on, fire before so, they even get a chance to fire. Yeah. So it, it practically yep. declared war on uh, Yep, that's what I was so reading. I, I, I've got several history books mentioning the Greer incident. Yes. Incident. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, so much, I, I didn't, uh, not that I remember a lot from my American history from high school, yeah. but I don't remember that being mentioned. Yeah. You know, they do mention Battle of Bunker Hill, yeah. you know, right. Pearl Harbor, yes. you know, right. Nagasaki. Yeah. No, it was such a minor incident, yes, but, still. but it was important because of Roosevelt <clears throat> picked it up. Yeah. Yes. Yep, and that's what it said. That was, you know, you know, we shoot them. If uh, yes, they're right. out there, we yeah. gotta protect right. ourselves. Right. Um, and you mentioned to me um, it was called the four stacker, the right. Greer. It, it was uh, a yeah. Each, each each stack had its own boiler, and, uh, oh, and it, was, okay. it, it was built. You know, it, it was. You look back and say, "Wow, it's crudely built," but yep. that's the best they had at the time. Uh, yep. the best engineering and the best yep. best they had to do with. And each stack had a boiler underneath okay. it. And, mm -hmm. and at the time, we, and with four stacks, in the in, in the back here, way mm -hmm. in the back, they had big bunkers of coal. Okay. And that's how they fired the boilers. All oh, shoveling geez, the coal, coal and then shoveling the ashes out and taking uh, the ashes away. Oof. And so, God was with me <coughs> so many times, <laughs> and I was. I got out of boot camp and I mm -hmm. was assigned to a Brooklyn Navy Yard. Yep. Strange, strange situation there. When you get out of boot camp, mm -hmm. there's rumors of where you're going to go to. Mm -hmm. And if, the big rumor was, if if you ask for the West Coast, you'll get the East Coast. If you ask for the East Coast, <laughs> you get the West Coast. So I said, out oh, of hell with that. That that's 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 kind of silly, you know. I said, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to ask for the East Coast because that's that's what I want. Yeah. Close, Close to, to home, home once in a while. Yep. So they sent me to Brooklyn Navy Yard. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> wow. I used to I used to get home a lot. Every time we came into port, mm -hmm. I'd get the subway, subway you know. get the subway all the way up to 168th Street and get the bus over to Bergenfield. Yep. In, 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 in your home, and no, no problem. Mom, mom would have dinner waiting but for you. The day I was assigned to this. At a boot camp, I sent mm -hmm. to Brooklyn Navy Yard, and I was assigned to the Greer. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> uh, if you want to see a good, a good picture, yeah, a good movie picture, see the the Kane Mutiny. Okay, yeah. And, and uh, it's a, it's it's about a destroyer in the Pacific, and and uh, in the book, 
I picked it up and all of a sudden I realized it, it's the four stack of destroyer in the book. Mm -hmm. But in, in, in the in the movie picture they didn't have any of these left. Mm -hmm. So they had they had a an older yeah. an older model of this here. Oh, okay. But I picked it up and and, and, and I read the Kane Mutiny. And if you ever get a chance to read to see the movie, you take yeah. a look at it. Yeah. When the when this fella goes aboard it. Mm -hmm. He goes aboard, and there's four destroyers stacked up, and he goes aboard. He said, wow, look at that beautiful sh be destroyer mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. He, and he goes aboard and says, I'm reporting for duty, the USS Greer. He <laughs> said, the Greer is the outboard well, ship. I'm climbing over to get there. <laughs> it looks like a garbage dump. <laughs> wow, well, terrible, terrible. It needed paint. It needed paint. It was terrible. And and they had just converted it. God, thank you, God. They had just converted it from coal to oil. Ah, they had taken out this last thing and okay. put oil tanks in there. No. Okay. So uh, it was, you know, instead of shoveling coal, coal in a 130 degree room, mm -hmm. it was still 130 mm -hmm. degree, but all I had to do is turn the valve to let the oil in, you know. So, so, so it, was a, it was a great step for it. Yeah. And uh, I spent a whole year on that, mm -hmm. on that, that ship there. Ah. And uh, it, was, it was great. We, we, would, we would go from Brooklyn Navy Yard mm -hmm. and, and take out a few cargo ships yeah. And pick up a few more from Boston and go up to St. John's, okay. Newfoundland, pick up a few more, Iceland, pick mm -hmm. up a few more. And by the time we were heading for England, we mm -hmm. had maybe 50 or 60 ships, freight freighters. Oh, okay. And you could see that they were loaded with tanks and yeah. airplanes and everything else, you know. So uh, mm -hmm. we would take them into uh, Liverpool, mostly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'd take them all the way to Murmansk, Russia. Oh, geez. Up, up yeah. above Norway and yep. Sweden, all the way up around. Huh. But strangely enough, very disappointing, we thought, oh, we're going to Russia. We're going to see what it's like. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't let anybody go no. off the ship. So, no, nobody. And, and, and those were uh, dangerous waters there, the North Atlantic, uh, yes, during yes, the war yes, with all right, the uh, right. uh, the U-boats. Yes, oh, yeah, U-boats yeah, all yeah. over the no, place. It wasn't you know. the, the U-boat and wolf, and wolf all around. The and, wolf packs. You know, we we had uh, we had this thing called sonar, mm -hmm. and, and it was a, a thing underneath the ship here yeah. that sent out rays, and it, and it could detect hmm. uh, objects in the water, mm -hmm. whether it was a big school of fish or mm -hmm. a whale or a submarine mm -hmm. or, or what, you know. Wow. So, and it all the, the guys mm -hmm. running it, they got to know what it was, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's how we detected the submarine wow. with the sonar. Wow. Then of course we had the uh, the not on this on on this other one. Yeah, when we get to the this, USS this map. here we had radar. Yeah, which could detect the planes mm -hmm. and anything on the surface. Any yeah. only metal. You couldn't okay. detect wood or anything. Because later on, when the when the rush, when the the uh, Japs came out with kamikazes, mm -hmm. they sent every plane they had out, even wooden planes, and we huh. couldn't pick them up on the radar, because. and they would. They would because sneak in, wood. you know. So wow. So, so. Uh, that. But getting back to uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the ship here, mm -hmm. we, that that was uh, that was our trips yeah. to uh, to England but, and a couple, a couple oh, of times to uh, to, to Russia. Russia. Yeah. It was very interesting. The first time we went over. <coughs> We went into uh, Northern Ireland, mm -hmm. Londonderry, Northern Ireland. <laughs> well, you're not too far. Londonderry, no, no. Vermont, Londonderry, right, Ireland. Right, right. I, I don't think it was the same Londonderry because there's a Londonderry in Yorkshire, mm -hmm. which is named after Londonderry, New Hampshire. Oh, yeah. And those people came to London, uh, in Vermont and named Londonderry. Right. So it, it came actually from Yorkshire, oh. not from Londonderry, Ireland. You know? oh. But. Uh, Wow. So as a looking at your discharge paper, you they said you were a water tender. A water tender, yes. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> what did a water tender do? I mean, a water tender fired the boilers. That's all okay. we did. We had we had uh, well on here we had yeah. we had three boilers. Yeah. In separate in separate rooms. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that's were, were you assigned um, to like a specific boiler? 
uh, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. I was. I, I had a specific job and a place to go every time I was on duty. But we had four hours on, eight hours off. You know? Okay. And so uh, that was that was my job. And of course, brand new on here, I had to learn right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. How, how, how Which way to turn them out? Did you have did uh, did the crew or the other water tenders? Did you name the stacks? You know, you know names. No, I don't okay. think so. Just not, you know, not stack one, two, three. Uh, I, yes, I think they okay. were one, two, three. Uh, the, uh, okay. Number one fire room, number two, two fire, fire room, room, number three fire room. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. how that's how they would on, yeah. on this ship too. Number one, number two fire room. Yeah. Okay. So. But uh, I, uh, I really enjoyed being out at sea. I had never been to sea before. Okay. And I, I really was thrilled to death, you know, to see mm -hmm. that you look out there and there's nothing out there. So mm -hmm. As far as you can see, there's nothing out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, uh, I put all, <coughs> all I could into learning my job and mm -hmm. asking questions. And, yep. and uh, that's what so, you do. Uh, I, I, I rose up a little bit in, in, in the rank. Mm -hmm. in the, and yeah. so uh, when I, after one year, they were building these ships so fast. Yeah. Oh, geez, yes. Yeah. They were building these ships one every six weeks. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think they so they had to you know, had to get men for them. So they uh, the uh, the chief the chief uh, board attender on this ship he mm -hmm. recommended that I I be yeah. transferred to a new yeah. ship. You mm -hmm. know what they call new construction. Yeah. So they I sent me up to Boston, mm -hmm. and uh, this was just came, coming in September. Yeah. We had the uh, commissioning ceremonies and everything, mm -hmm. and we headed out to uh, the Pacific. Through the, yeah. First of all, we had Bermuda for a shakedown. What they go? Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't, the, wasn't a shakedown. It yeah. was just to try yeah. everything out, see mm -hmm. that everything's not falling yeah. apart and, and yeah. working properly. Yeah. But Bermuda was uh, the first experience yes. for me. Oh. Overseas, okay, and it was strange. Uh, <laughs> all the black people talk an English <laughs> accent, you know? yes. So, mm -hmm. so it was a very strange thing, and it was a mm -hmm. so, uh, so this the, was uh, the second ship was the USS Knapp, yes, yes, um, where yes. You, it was brand new, like you said, you know, it's, you know, getting out of I don't know if it was um, Quincy Shipyard or Bath Ironworks where it came out of, but like you said, right. they were built extremely quickly. Right, right, um, and and not only there, that they had about a dozen shipyards all around oh, East yeah. Coast and West Coast. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, you yeah. know, get the war effort going. We need to. Yeah. And you know what really helped out, you know, with Roosevelt yeah. was the yeah. WPA, the Worksop Projects. Right. right. You know, the war yeah. effort. Hey, let's get so. Um, what was it like going through the Panama Canal the first time? It was extremely I mean, interesting. Nobody slept. Yeah. You know? <laughs> It was extremely interesting. Mm -hmm. There were two cities on each side, and it was Balboa and Panama City yeah. on, on, on either end of it. And uh, fortunately, uh, everybody on ship got at least one evening mm -hmm. li uh, liberty yeah. to go ashore to say, okay. yes, I was in Panama. Okay. And so uh, the, there was always bars and everything mm -hmm. there, but it was interesting. But uh, going through the canal and the, these locks and everything, mm -hmm. it was, you know, just an amazing for a 18-year-old mm. kid. Most yes. of us were 18 Teen. years old at yes. the time. Yep. And so it was an amazing situation. Go, And then inside, in between mm -hmm. the locks, I'm a, it was a lake. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I, I never forget, one day, I, I, I'm walking down, and all of a sudden I'm hit with a, with a hose of water. Mm -hmm. And he said, get out of the way. These guys said, I said, what are you doing? He said, we're washing the ship down. What for? It's the only place we can get fresh water. <laughs> <laughs> this lake was fresh water. Okay? Oh, so they geez. were washing it all, 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 that ship. it all down. So, jeez. How, how long did it take to go through the canal? Uh, not too long, about okay. three, four days. Oh, jeez. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. No, it, we, wow. they were in a hurry to get us out there. You know? uh, yeah, I can imagine so, all yeah. um, all these ships lined up trying yes, to get yeah. through to get from... But it was the, interesting to see, uh, <clears throat> you know, it wasn't as though it was waiting waiting for us, you know. Mm -hmm. There was piles of ships ahead of yes. us, aircraft carriers, and then mm -hmm. big battleships, everything. 
Yeah. And so uh, I think the Saratoga, the aircraft carrier Saratoga yeah. was, was going Go through at the time. And mm -hmm. just easing through it, you know, just, mm -hmm. just the right size. So it Jeez. was, it was extremely interesting uh, mm -hmm. for, for me. Yeah. For, yeah. Uh, did you, did you take pictures or did you have a no, camera? You know, no, we were not allowed to have cameras. Okay. You no, know, uh, and neither ship, I don't know, some of these guys, <coughs> some of my friends, uh, like during the Korean War, mm -hmm. they were allowed to have cameras aboard ship. Yep. But uh, during World War II, we were not, and I know our whole division was not yep. allowed to have cameras. Yeah. I think in case we went down, the Japs might pick up the, the camera cameras. or something, yep. you know. You know, it goes back to it's like well, mail. Our mail was censored in mm -hmm. case it went down, and they had yep. something in there in the mail that the Japs yep. would yeah, find. Yeah, that was um, yeah. part of um, uh, the effort back then. You know, sort of like probably the soldiers in the trenches, two on a light. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, right. 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 Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. In interesting. Yes. Um, and then, geez, you know, like I said, looking at your discharge, you know, you were over in the Philippines. Um, you know, over there, the the it saw a lot of uh, battles over there. Yes, in the Pacific. Yeah, we we, we got into Pearl Harbor and and mm -hmm. uh, we didn't stay there for just a couple yep. of days to load up with ammunition and uh, fuel, mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, <coughs> a small ship like this, mm -hmm. and it's geared to use the engines tremendously, mm -hmm. and use a lot of fire, a lot of power. Mm -hmm. And therefore, use a lot of oil. Yeah, we we had bought 150,000 gallons at, wow. uh, of oil, fuel oil. Jeez. And but many times when we were out in the Pacific, mm -hmm. when we were doing what they call flank speed, mm -hmm. going in as yeah, fast zigzagging. as we could, yeah, we used 5,000 gallons a, an an hour. Whew. You know, 5,000 gallons an That's hour. That's a lot. And, and so. Yeah. Uh, but we had to refuel many times. We mm -hmm. refuel from aircraft carriers, okay. refuel from uh, battleships, mm -hmm. and so. Jeez. Uh, sometimes, when we were in a battle battle area, mm -hmm. we had to refuel what they call top off mm -hmm. every morning. Yeah. At five thirty, we'd pull up alongside a carrier and just mm -hmm. top it up, in case the battle got worse and mm -hmm. you were not yeah. able to to get fuel. Yeah. yeah. You, you had, had a sufficient supply. And also, there's always the threat of a typhoon going through. Mm -hmm. We went through one typhoon, what yeah. they call Halsey's typhoon. Uh, and uh, the uh, it was just east of the Philippines, northeast of the Philippines. And we had three ships like this that got sunk. Jeez. And, and, and the, the typhoon. typhoon the, the, the wind was a hundred <coughs> miles an hour. The waves were a hundred feet mm -hmm. high, and so yeah. uh, we we picked up quite a few uh, fellows mm -hmm. in, yep. in in the water, yep. that from the from the sunken ships. But mm -hmm. uh, that's why we had to. What happened was uh, the other ships, they got low on fuel, mm -hmm. and they got top heavy. Okay. And when the wave hits, it took them over. over. So. We had to keep a, we had to keep the fuel tanks full as much oh, as possible. Geez. Wow, yeah. Like I said, looking at your discharge, you know, some of the medal, good conduct medal, European Theater Medal, um, Philippine Liberation Medal with two stars. Yeah. What does the two stars mean? Uh, two we'll stars are uh, uh, two different battles on, okay. on the Philippines. Yeah. Okay. The, the Philippine uh, the Battle of Lady uh, Lady Gulch. Okay. The biggest naval battle in the history of the world. Huh. And and uh, late late he Gulf. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And then the occupation. We were okay. The occupation. We were in the, in the Philippines <coughs> for a few months. Mm -hmm. And the end of forty four and beginning of forty five, uh, when mm -hmm. MacArthur was taken. Mm -hmm. There was two. There were two navies out there at the time. Okay. We had this what we call. So fortunately, thank God again, we, where he put me. Mm -hmm. This in our division, we had four, three other ships in our division, mm -hmm. and and <laughs> there was always to begin with when we left Pearl Harbor in in forty forty three, uh, we had we had three aircraft carriers and two mm -hmm. battleships, 
couple of cruisers mm -hmm. and a big string of destroyers around them mm -hmm. we watching for, for submarines and yep. aircraft and we were chosen to be one of those ah. and this was what they called the attack force with with the, with the Admiral Halsey mm -hmm. and, and, the, and so that was that was the beginning mm -hmm. three aircraft carriers that's yep. all we had Jeez. By the end of the war, we had 17 in that group, <laughs> just in that group alone, in the attack group. Now, wow. there was another navy, mm -hmm. uh, it was called MacArthur's Navy. Okay. It, when, when MacArthur was going to have an invasion there, mm -hmm. he, he had to have a lot, of, a lot of support, yeah. a lot of transport, uh, mm -hmm. all, the, all the landing ship, landing ship tanks and, mm -hmm. and everything yeah. had to, uh, and he had he had a bunch of aircraft carriers and pilot destroyers and all all the all except one mm -hmm. battleship that was saved salvaged from Pearl Harbor. Huh. They raised them all up, okay. fixed them up, and gave and them to MacArthur for bombarding the shore. Jeez. Now the only what was the only one that they couldn't have? Oh, they, was the Arizona. The Arizona yeah. was the only one still there, you know. So uh, MacArthur mm. had his navy, yeah, and uh, well, well, Admiral Halsey had his in navy. Oh, yeah. we, we were in the attack, and we were in the, the late, Lady that, Gulf. That's dead. a that's a, a lot of firepower. The, the big, uh, <laughs> the biggest naval battle in the history of the world. I have know? to read up on that. Yeah. Now continuing yeah. on. You know the Victory Medal, the American uh, Theater Medal, and the Asiatic Pacific Medal with nine stars. Yes, well, that, that, that was all going was across. We had battles all the way across, all the, the way to the, uh, all the way to Japan. You know. Jeez. Yeah. Wow. I, I was not in Iwo Jima. No. We were we were sent back to the States mm -hmm. in February of '45, mm -hmm. and we were there for two months, and I missed. Iwo Jima, ah. but uh, <laughs> and unfortunately for those poor guys, those Marines, know. you know that, that was a bit terrible loss. It they 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 thought Iwo Jima was the worst disaster that ever happened, you know, mm -hmm. as far as losses. Yes, it was nothing compared to Okinawa. Yes, and that is when uh, when Okinawa started in in uh, May. In about May of uh, 1945, mm -hmm. the, uh, the most, most poor Marines they <laughs> were shipped over to Okinawa mm -hmm. for worse yet, yeah, you know. mm -hmm. and that that's when all the kamikazes, yes. the suicide planes, came out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, at sometimes, we would circle Okinawa in a circle and use our radar to show the pickup planes coming in mm -hmm. to attack the beachhead and everything. Yeah. At some times, there was 150 planes in the air. Wow. You know? And uh, Jeez. That's a lot. We, we, we lost over 60 destroyers like that. You know? mm. And fortunately, the only thing that happened to us, a plane came in, yeah. came alone, and of course, I was down, I was down in the fire room here. Yeah. But they told me later on it came in and it hit, it hit that gun. Okay. hit that gun and circled and crashed out there. And that's the worst we had. That's the worst Jeez. damage we had. It's very, well, very you're, fortunate. Uh, yeah, uh, you've been fortunate for everything. Everything. Yes. 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 So yes. fast forward. Here we are. You yeah. know, during the summer months of '45. Yeah. You know, uh, the Manhattan Project going on here in the states. Yeah. Um, yes. And then but, uh, let, let, let me let me add this. Mm -hmm. We knew. <clears throat> we knew that when we saw all these ships coming out, we said, "My God, you know those guys are working back then," mm -hmm. and and the uh, the uh, tremendous industrial might of, of America was really showing us the, the uh, un unbelievable what the, what they turned out. Of course, those guys were working yeah. probably twelve hours a day. Yeah. You know, a lot of them, you know, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and, uh, and a lousy, a lot of rosy derivators. It wasn't, yes, it wasn't only the ships coming out, mm -hmm. but all the stuff on the ships, all the, yeah. all the ammunition and the food, mm -hmm. food yeah. being brought out for all these people. Yeah. It was amazing mm -hmm. what they did. 
Yeah, that makes and sense. then yeah. everybody backstage having uh, yeah. the the ration cards. Yes, you can only get yeah. gas, flour, sugar, yeah, and, and whatever. And, and my brothers, I had two brothers at home bitching mm -hmm. like mad about <laughs> the rationing cards. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah. So oh. we we get through, and um, I think you had mentioned one time in our conversations about the um, potential invasion of Japan. Uh, yes, one of that. Um, yes. So. Uh, I, I've been watching on television, and they were talking about the, in August the mm -hmm. uh, anniversary, 75th mm -hmm. anniversary of uh, dropping the, the bombs on them, and there was a lot of talk either way. You know, mm -hmm. they should have, they shouldn't have, and this yep. and that. And there's this one fellow that was leaning toward saying they could have done better without mm -hmm. without it. He was saying, however, I never talked to a I never talked to a veteran who was out there, mm -hmm. you know, because every every guy that was out there saying, "I'm alive today," because mm -hmm. they dropped the bombs, yeah. and uh, they, yeah. uh, if, they if, uh, if the well, the truth has been told about everything. We went ashore in September, right after the surrender ceremonies. We went mm -hmm. ashore, and uh, we were fortunately we didn't have to anchor out in the bay. We were tied up to the dock. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were assigned, we were given 40, 45 caliber uh, pistols to carry with us. And we went and we searched all the houses in the vicinity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Armfuls of bamboo spears, you know, that we Jeez. would bring out wow. and, burn, and burn them, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, for, for weeks we mm -hmm. were doing that. And uh, wow. on and on and on. And then, after that was, after we had cleaned the neighborhood out, just mm. the neighborhood, they sent us out on this area. In 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 in, in we was we were actually in a former Japanese naval base, mm. and uh, we went and inspected. We, we came across several hundred mm -hmm. Japanese midget submarines. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. they were all loaded and everything, you know, mm -hmm. but all tied up there. And we had to uh, tow them, tow them out. We had, mm -hmm. see on the say we have a little, yeah. little, a little motor whale boat. They call yeah. it a motor whale boat. Up mm -hmm. here. We had one on each side. And yeah. we put that in the water and we'd tow two submarines out into the bay, mm -hmm. open the hatch and drop a, a bomb inside mm -hmm. a time, give it yeah. about three mm -hmm. minutes. Yeah. Get off and blow up and sink. Huh. Hundreds. Of them yes. That they were waiting for the invasion. Yeah. You know, reading up on the potential invasion, they were, you know, estimating you know um, hundreds of thousands of U.S. casualties. My, like I had said earlier, my friend's father was on the USS Bennington, yes. steaming towards. We operated with the Bennington to towards yep. the end of the war. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. So. Here we are, September second, September third. Yeah, depending yeah. upon where you are in the world. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Let me you, tell you, you a funny story about the time zone. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if we have time. Of course, yes. Uh, the, uh, the first time we crossed the equator mm -hmm. on, on this ship here, mm -hmm. uh, we were going to cross the equator, and then when when you cross the equator, even sometimes on an airplane, yeah. you'll have a little ceremony of saying, you know, for the first time. You, the initiation ceremony, mm -hmm. but they had a big one. They on a ship they have a big one, you know. They don't yeah. care how they, they beat the hell out of you. you know? so, but uh, anyway, we were having it. It was all on this. This is the mm -hmm. fan tail here. Yep. It's a big, big area here. Mm -hmm. We were having the initiation here. Fortunately, it was a great uh, time. Mm -hmm. There were three hundred of us un un. Uh, yeah. Un, uh, Being the ties, you know, yeah. what we call polywogs. Yeah. And then there was 25 shellbacks, mm -hmm. the, the, the fellows that had been across. And the 25 were going to initiate the 300. You know? <laughs> so it was an all day affair. So sometime mm -hmm. in the afternoon, mm -hmm. all of a sudden they, they called for attention. And the captain was standing on, on the top of this five inch gun here. Mm -hmm. he, he was saying, and he's saying, okay, okay, so everybody stopped talking. We respected the captain as though he was God, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we, we, uh, we had a great 
real respect for him because mm -hmm. he he was in charge and he was he was going to save our lives and he's going to save the ship and everything else. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he said, "Okay, okay." He said, uh, "Now give me your attention for a few minutes." He said, "I want you to remember, there's a war on. Don't forget, <laughs> you know, said, uh, don't get out of hand too much. Mm -hmm. That anybody gets hurt, we don't want anybody hurt." Yeah. So he said, "Let me tell you something." He said, "In a few minutes." We're going to cross the equator, and we're going to cross the international date line at the same time. <laughs> and is this, this, this is a rare, mm -hmm. rare situation? Mm -hmm. He said, "Now let me tell you something that you can tell your grandchildren." And we never realized that he, he was a human being, you know. Mm -hmm. And he told this really interesting story. He said, "Now, in a few minutes, we'll be crossing the point." Those who want to can go up on the bow mm -hmm. up here, up yeah. here. He said, and you'll be in tomorrow. <laughs> well, these guys will be in yesterday. <laughs> so, so, so then you can walk back here mm -hmm. and you'll say, okay, I'm in today, but there are those guys are in tomorrow. <laughs> he, said, he said, we have we have here a time machine. He said, <laughs> It was very interesting. Yeah. Wow, that so, is. <laughs> <laughs> so you went from a polywog to a shellback. Yes, right. Yeah. Um, did they give you a certificate? Oh, uh, I've got to bring that in. I've oh, got, yeah. It's a great. It's a great big. Yeah. Deal. Yeah. I've seen them uh, and, here. And, and not not um, only crossing equator, but crossing in the international daylight yeah. at the same time. Mm -hmm. It. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a real. Yeah. Situation. Yeah. So here we are, August. You know, the United States drops the bombs. Yeah. You um, arrive in Tokyo Harbor yeah. on, I think it was like either August 30th or somewhere around there yeah. with another 255 ships. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've never been to Tokyo Harbor, yeah. but yeah. I can imagine 255 we ships lot, in there. A lot, lot of ships. When we, um, we were very cautious, uh, you know, about. Mm -hmm because having come across a lot of Japanese mm -hmm. that uh, refused to give up or rather sur or rather die than, yeah. than surrender, yeah. we thought, well, we've got to be careful. Mm -hmm. So we went on half, half uh, mm -hmm. caution. Yeah. And, and so uh, no smoking at night, no, yeah. no smoking, no, no, yeah. uh, same thing yeah. as usual. But uh, when we were in, in the bay there, it was a, uh, uh, we went very relaxed and uh, mm -hmm. there was a, a, a lot, a lot of, of uh, anxiety going on, mm -hmm. and everybody was, you know, we we, we just didn't re lay back and relax, you know. We said, "Hey, you're tied up in in in, in Okinawa." When we were in mm -hmm. Okinawa, there, we would go in for to refuel and take on supplies, and the Japanese mm -hmm. Japanese on land would <coughs> swim out and, and attach a bomb to, yeah. to the ship. Yeah. We lost quite a few ships that way. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, not yeah. us. No, so. Yeah. so here of the 255 ships that were in Tokyo Harbor that yeah. day, yeah. depending if you were in the United States, it was September 2nd. <laughs> if you're in Tokyo Harbor, it's September 3rd. Yes. But of the 255, 226 were American ships. Yes, yes. And you were on the USS Snap, very well positioned. Yes. Um, and like I said earlier, <coughs> excuse me, you know, witness to history. You said you were like what a couple hundred yards off the Missouri. We were we were about two or three hundred yards, and mm -hmm. and and I've got several books. I should have yeah. brought a book yeah. showing a picture mm -hmm. of the uh, the uh, big mill. The, the the Missouri was here. Yeah, and and we were in this position mm -hmm. here. So this so, is the view we got. And on and on the on the bow on mm -hmm. the bow that's where the cere so ceremony this. took place here. Yeah. So you're and on I, the starboard I, side. Fortunately, fortunately, mm -hmm. we had a, a man in a fire room crew mm -hmm. who was on the bridge all the time. Yeah. And he would, he had a set of ear, ear phones, mm -hmm. and he would tell us if we were making smoke or not, huh. because if you make smoke, they could the submarines could see, see it ten mm -hmm. miles away. Yeah. So we had a man up there all the time. So. When this took place, yeah. I I figured I'm gonna go up on the bridge and see what Thompson's doing. Yeah. So I went up there and there was Thompson, he was all alone and he said, yeah. I went on the bridge and took a pair of uh, binoculars. Mm -hmm. He said, Here, look at this and I looked at and here this 
Japanese with a cane was climbing up the mm -hmm. steps on the side of the Missouri. He got to the top and we we shipped, we shipped the binoculars back and forth and we saw MacArthur and Wainwright. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Wainwright was MacArthur's second in command in the yep. Philippines and okay. had been captured and sent to Manchuria oh, for three and a half years in a geez. prison camp. And he was there and in Halsey and all. Mm. And we saw, I remember wow. seeing MacArthur signing the papers mm -hmm. and when he signed one paper he turned around and he gave Wainwright the, the pen the, 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 that he signed. Mm. For, Mm. So it was a, a nice gesture. Yes. Yep. Wow. So they, um, I'm just trying to see, you were discharged in, was it 45 too? No. No. In, in 46, I guess. 46, yes. Fe February 46? Uh, uh, April, uh, yep, February. Yeah. Yeah. And so you went back home to Bergenfield. Right. right. There was... Um, Mom and Dad, I'm going to presume, still around. Right, right. You know, and, and then uh, and all the other Barclays running around the house. They, they were running around the house. They're not not all sleeping there, but yeah. uh, they were there very uh -huh. close. And, and uh, when, uh, when you got home, what did you do for? Because uh, you had first, to come back through the Panama Canal again. No, <laughs> no, I, I I really enjoyed what I was doing, mm -hmm. and I had worked hard. Yeah, and and I. Uh, I came up, I, I finished out being the first class. Okay. And, and, and uh, although on my discharge it says second class, but at mm -hmm. one time, at one time we had an emergency in the fire room. Mm -hmm. And I called the bridge and I said, we have an emergency. We, we might stop mm -hmm. one engine. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon the captain was telling me what's happening. I explained it to him. I told him, went through the process. I got everything straightened out. Perfectly right. Mm -hmm. Even my chief came down and said, he's doing exactly what he should do. Mm -hmm. So when it was all over, the captain said, what's your rate? Mm -hmm. I said, I'm water time to second class. He said, from now on, you're third class, you're first class. Okay. Wow. So, uh, so, <laughs> but uh, it was never put in my record. But all the guys Jeez. in the, in the uh, fire room mm -hmm. uh, recognized me as first class. So. Huh. I claim to be first class. Good. Hey, if <laughs> the captain says so, you're yourself. It stuff. was important to me because yes. uh, uh, having having a, a rate mm -hmm. and and showing that you had accomplished so mm -hmm. much work and, and information and mm -hmm. and a mental uh, achievement. Wow. Uh, when I got out, yeah. I, I really enjoyed what I had been doing: valves mm -hmm. and pipes and yeah. steam fittings and. And all sorts of pressure mm. things, mm. and so when I got out, I got a job with a plumber. Okay. And uh, so uh, we worked for him for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and uh, and I guess let's see. I guess I guess worked for him forty six, forty seven, about three years. I worked for him, and I stayed home and worked mm -hmm. with him. And after three years, I married his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so he couldn't fire you then. <laughs> so he couldn't fire me then. No. And, 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 and within a couple of years, his daughter was a, a very bright, brilliant girl. Mm -hmm. And uh, Well, she uh, married you. So Yeah, she married me. Yes. Well, what else? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I mean, she, she was really, really bright. Mm -hmm. We didn't realize it until later on, you know, that yeah. we found out the records of... She had a um, an IQ of 144. Wow. You know, Eisen. Jeez. Uh, 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 who was it? Who was that bright guy? You know? uh, Einstein. 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 Yeah, Einstein. 145. Yeah. Oh. Mm. So, so uh, she was really, really bright, and so, she didn't uh, want to show him up. No. <laughs> yes. No. Jeez. <laughs> anyway, uh, I uh, I paid a lot of attention to her because mm. she was so bright, you know, and. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we had a good life together. Okay. And, uh, so we had, we had this uh, nice business and we built the business up very, okay. very big. Yeah. And in 19, uh, 1970, mm -hmm. she said to me, said, hey, the Peace Corps has taken whole families. Let's sell the business and join mm -hmm. the Peace Corps. Jeez. So that's what happened. So, and, and how many kids did you have? Four. Four, okay. Took the four kids Just, with us. Jeez. Yeah. So Peace Corps, yeah. 
you know, geez, you're all over the world, Southeast Asia, yeah. Africa. Yeah, most mostly, uh, mostly, uh, uh, you know, equatorial areas. Yeah. Okay. Mostly in Southeast Asia and in Africa. You know. Okay. Never, never hit South uh, South America. You know. Okay. So, um, uh, did your um, children become polywogs to shellbacks? And <laughs> right, right after, right after. Uh, Peace Corps. Mm -hmm. They, we told the kids, "Oh, you're going to go to college." Mm -hmm. Yes, we want to go to college. We want to take up something that gets us working overseas. So they went, uh, went to college, mm -hmm. and and uh, when they graduated, they joined the Peace Corps. Jeez, and they all they started there. And uh, my daughter, my youngest daughter, now she works for the United Nations, mm -hmm. and uh, she's. She's got an office in Belgium somewhere. Okay. She's been all over the world. You know? she's, so was, she, she's yeah. a bright one, and she's followed my wife. Okay. And she's the bright one. She's a, she speaks about five or six different languages. And, wow. And Bill, That's, Bill, of course, he mm -hmm. he was uh, he worked for the World Food Program. Okay. And a, a, a monstrous big program mm -hmm. uh, on the sidelines of the United Nations. He worked in Africa mostly, and in and in uh, the Near East, mm -hmm. and uh, he uh, did did very well. Mm -hmm. My my other two daughters, they they worked mm -hmm. in for missionary groups. Huh. Men, Mennonite Central Committee is a great huh. big. It's probably one of the biggest missionary groups in the United States. Uh, huh. Those Mennonites, it's, you know, yes. uh, out in Pennsylvania, yeah, Pennsylvania, in, 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 in Ohio, sure. out there. Yeah. You know. There's another so. group too down south um, when there's like disasters when trees are down. I think it's called the uh, Baptist Chainsaw Group. Uh -huh. So I think they were up here a couple of years ago uh -huh. uh, when there was um, pro uh, you know a lot of trees down. Yeah. They just come in. They'll clear your trees. No, no, no they for free. Oh. So I can see. You know yeah. some things that you know that your children do. Yeah, yeah. So how how did you and your bride get here to Vermont? Uh, and don't say take a ride at New York. We we <laughs> did, we yeah. Uh, just just about the same time we joined the Peace Corps, mm -hmm. my wife said, you know, we ought to get out of New Jersey. It's getting so crowded. People are pouring out of the mm -hmm. out of New York City. Mm -hmm. So uh, we came up here to Vermont. Well, we worked. worked Looked at Western New Jersey, mm -hmm. Northern Pennsylvania, yeah. Catskills, yeah. Connecticut, huh. Adirondacks. Got into Vermont and fell in love with it immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, bought a house yeah. up in Londonderry. You know. Oh, jeez! So, yeah. And reading your bio here, it said you um, you have your uh, PhD. Yes, right. What's your PhD in? In vocational education. Vocational. It was strange, yes. you know. I, I had learned to work so hard mm -hmm. aboard ship mm -hmm. to better myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, I'm not too bright. Uh, and, and, and I'm not saying that just, just mm -hmm. to be funny. Yep. Uh, I, I, I relied on my wife a lot for important decisions. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, if I'm going to go to, right after Peace Corps, we decided, we were all going to college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the four kids. Wow. Of course, the two eldest kids had started mm -hmm. uh, by mail and this and that. So I said, okay, the two youngest ones, Bill want, wanted to get into agriculture because he figured overseas there was a yep. lot of ag, yep. uh, the need. especially developing countries. Mm -hmm. and, and Ellen wanted to get into nutrition. She figured mm -hmm. she'd get she'd get a lot, lot of overseas jobs in nutrition. So. Ellen and I and Bill, we started, we joined up in Colorado State University. Mm -hmm. Four years later, mm -hmm. Ellen graduated with a bachelor's in, in nutrition, Bill yep. graduated in agriculture, a bachelor's. I graduated with a PhD mm -hmm. in vocational Excellent. education. Mm -hmm. I, I never had one day off mm -hmm. in those four days, four years. years. And on top of taking courses every day, I was mm -hmm. taking three or four by mail Jeez. from the University of Georgia, University mm -hmm. of Iowa, here and there. And so I did the whole thing in four years. You know. Jeez. I don't Phenomenal. recommend it to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. I, I mean, you, you've done phenomenal. I mean, 
coming back to what your parents instilled in you, you know, yeah. you know, you know, your father there working hard yes, and doing yes, everything yes. and really helping out other people. I mean, yeah. that's, yeah. that's, um, that is a, a tremendous thing. You know, how many people, I couldn't imagine my dad, you know, um, leaving IBM and saying, okay, we're all going to join the Peace Corps <laughs> and we're going to travel wherever, you yeah. know. I could see dad say, well, IBM is transferring me to Colorado or to um, Ireland yes. or to yes. someplace. But, yes, yes. Um, you, you've done a, a tremendous, uh, you know, your, uh, your kids. Um, it was a great experience. You know, yes, was, and, and Votech, I mean, that's coming back now. It's hard to yeah. find, yeah. El, you know, electricians, you know, plumbers, yeah. um, you know, the things that your uh, children do, ag agriculture, yeah. you know, yeah. he he yeah. helping out. Because yeah. um, that's, you know, in the middle of all this COVID, wearing our masks, you know, yeah. we're um, right. in this together. We've got to help each yes. other. Right, right, right. And um, so I really uh, appreciated this. Well, I know it's, it's it's 96 years and in like an hour and a half, I and we I can still keep, go on. May I have these? You can keep those. Yes. Uh, I yep. gotta keep reminding myself that yep. I'm 96 years old. You, I, know. Uh, you don't look 96. Yeah. Uh, no, and, uh, that, yeah. That's it's sometime it's not good because people expect more. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Well, I, I think it's good genes. You don't know. Like Very you said, good Don't genes, know if it's yes. uh, from your it father's all, side or your mother's genes, side, yeah. or. Um, yeah. Who knows? It could be, you know, the, the nice, uh, you know, upbringing of, you know, in New Jersey, fresh yeah. air and um, yes. yeah. everything. So, yeah. um, and just your experiences um, around the world. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I see in here you were, um, you are a Mason. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I got, what what I got level? Involved in Masonry when I moved up here. Okay. Yeah. Very uh, fortunate. That's, that's a whole new story. That's a whole okay. big story. I, I I really worked at it hard. Mm -hmm. Came up in the ranks, mm -hmm. and and uh, my my last job in in, in in 1990s, I was appointed because I had joined some Br British lodges in England. I had mm -hmm. visited England. I joined some lodges over there, and the Grand Lodge of England. Mm -hmm. uh, just see the size of the Grand Lodge. The Grand Lodge of Vermont. We have about 10,000 members. Yeah. The Grand Lodge of England has 350,000, you know, that's a big, big, yeah. big out. Yeah. They appointed me as their official representative from the Grand Lodge of England to the Grand Lodge of Vermont. Uh -huh. And they Jeez. invite me every year mm -hmm. at, uh, to, to attend their, their March meeting okay. when, they, when they elect the, the, the new offices. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the British, to, to the surprise of, of Americans, the British love, 90% mm -hmm. love the royal family. Mm -hmm. And we have, and, and, and the head of the, head of the, uh, the British masonry, mm -hmm. the Grand Lodge of England, is, is, in the, is the Duke of Kent. He's the, ah. And Jeez. I got to know him. <laughs> and I got to know him very, very, very well. And of course, being raised by my mother, you know, no elbows on the table, yeah. you know, hold the knife and fork right yeah. up. They said, okay, you can sit with the, with the, with the, <laughs> with the Grand Mass or something. <laughs> I sit with him when I, I go there mm -hmm. at, at, the, at, the, at the lunch table, lunch table after the meeting. Mm -hmm. We have lunch, so wonderful Jeez. situation. Yeah, I know some, my travels into Europe, uh, the French, you know, really appreciate Nice. Um, but the United States have done for yeah. them, you know, yeah. um, a couple of times. Um, so it is, it is really nice. So, yeah. geez, you have to get back over there for their next uh, meeting. That somehow. Well, I tried, I tried in March to go over, yeah. but uh, it was just on the edge of this thing coming in. And, and the mm -hmm. doctor said, uh, better not, uh, better, yeah, okay. you know, it's kind of iffy. No, okay. yeah. Well, you, but, you got uh, next March. Um, maybe and then maybe my March, you know. Then. Yeah, um, and then your son or your daughters can uh, yeah. Yeah. take you take you on over. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm looking forward to. It. I hope by March when this 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 thing is finished. You know. Yes. Oh, you're you're not the only one. Um, so I really appreciate this. This was uh, phenomenal. Um, you know. You know. And thank great. you. Thank oh, you oh, for thank, all thank your you. time. Oh yeah. Thank you for your well, time we and can, effort. You, you well, went to a lot of trouble for this. No, no this is no trouble at all. No, no. 
So re really appreciate you uh, being here sharing. And um, like I said, witnessed history. Um, Tokyo Harbor, September 2nd or September 3rd. <laughs> it bothers me, you know. It bothers me oh, because yeah. I know I, I, went, I went and looked in our logbook mm -hmm. and, and, uh, on, on the bridge, mm -hmm. and he had, had written in there, surrender yeah. ceremonies, yeah. September 3rd, 1945. Yeah. 40, yeah. yeah. So. Oh, well. Thanks very much, Mr. Barclay. Thank we'll have to, we'll have to do this Appreciate again. It. Yes. Thank you very much.